Hey guys, welcome back to Location Name. It's me, Ella, and today we're doing a crochet and chat. Hey guys, welcome back. I thought today I would do another crochet and chat. Um, I hope I'm looking in the right place. You're pretty far away. <laughs> Where is the camera? Oh, right there. <laughs> but um, today I'm working on my Valentine's Day owl thing. I actually made the heart and it ended up being huge for some reason. Uh, so I went down a couple hook sizes and I'm remaking it so hopefully it'll fit um, and not be too small <laughs> or I'll have to figure out something to do in between. But yeah, so I thought it'd be fun to just sit here and work on this while I chatted and um, I miss doing these videos and I've had a few people uh, ask me when I was going to do more so I thought I'd do it now. Um, uh, if I have to stop filming for some reason, you know, like if it cuts, it'll be because I got a phone call or something. Devin's already at work, so he shouldn't text and interrupt me, so hopefully no one else will. <laughs> but yeah, so I got my laptop right here because I got my pattern on it. And I got my yarn and stuff surrounded me. <laughs> and I thought I'd just sit here and chat with y'all for a minute. I'm really shiny because the window is right there. Uh, the windowsill is the only place I could find to set the phone right now. And it's super sunny today. It's been really rainy, but today it's actually sunny. And nice. It's like in the 40s. So we just got back. Before Devin left, we went to um, play Pokemon Go a little bit around the square. So it was nice to, uh, to do that. I'm wearing my shirt today that Devin gave me for Christmas. It says no catchy name. It's got a yarn ball on it. Yeah. I'm using a... Um, what is it called? A boy hook that my sister got me last year. It's actually a Valentine's Day one. It's really blown out. You can't see it because of the sunlight. But um, it's a little chocolate hearts. So I thought that was fitting. I needed an e-hook and this is the only e-hook that I have. And uh, it's a boy. I usually use baits. And I don't have an e-baits. So I have to get some. So yeah, I'm not exactly sure what to talk about. I usually ask... Um, in like a post or something what I should talk about and uh, people leave comments so if there's anything for a future one that you're interested in knowing about um, go ahead and leave it down below it could be a question or anything like that as long as it's not crazy personal I will try to answer it <laughs> um, I posted this morning I think it was this morning yeah on the Facebook group about um, amigurumi questions I'm working on a video series for amigurumi um, tips and tricks and little tutorials on how to do certain things. I've already got one filmed and edited and ready to go. I just have to, I want to get the other ones going before I upload it. And um, the one I already have filmed is how to do the invisible decrease for amigurumis. And I know a lot of people uh, need to learn about how to stuff them properly and uh, like sew the head on so where it's not wobbly and uh, I've only recently learned how to do that well <laughs> and um, how to sew the facial features and body parts on and all that kind of stuff and it is a little hard when you're first learning how to do stuff like that how to do it the right way and um, so yeah I've, I'm just I'm not an expert on amigurumi by any means I'm not known for my amigurumi or anything if anything right now what most people recognize me from is my mandala madness blanket um, I have a lot of people that come to my channel just because they've seen that or heard other people talk about it or something. But, um, you know, I didn't know anything about amigurumi a little over a year ago. Um, my very first, well, I made one am amigurumi years ago and it turned out pretty rough. I used to have a picture of it, but I don't know if I still do. And it was a little rabbit and it was, it was good, but it was definitely a beginner. <laughs> you could tell a beginner made it. But, um, and then I really didn't get into making amigurumi until summer 2017, right after we moved in here. We moved in, uh, early winter, not the end of the year winter, but the beginning of the year winter, um, to this apartment in 2017. And Jesse was still real little. He wasn't even a year old yet. Let me count my stitches real fast. One, two, three. Follow my pattern. <laughs> um, and I first started making uh, Mary Smith's amigurumis. I'm pretty sure the first one from her I ever made was the big bird that I still have. It's actually in here somewhere. Jesse had it playing with it. 
uh, it's made with Red Heart Super Saver Banana Berry, which I love. I wish they still sold that in store. It's one of my favorite Red Heart Super Savers to make amigurumis with, just because I love blue and green together, and it's really pretty together. I think that was my first one. It was either that bird or the, the bunny rabbit. I can't remember. It's been two years almost. <laughs> um, which is crazy to think it's been that long. Uh, yeah, and it was the rabbit I made, and what else? Was it the elf? No, the elf has a stick in it. A few of them I made have the real floppy necks because it was before I knew about how to, one, either stuff it in a way to make its neck stand up, or two, to use dowels. I started using dowels, I think it was in one of her patterns, and then I've been continuing to do that. And it really depends on the pattern of the amigurumi, if, if you can use the stick method or the stuffing method. And uh, it also depends on how the the head and body are attached. Like if you have two balls of amigurumi, you know, like the body shape ovally circle and the round um, head circle, but they're both closed to where you decrease down to a close and you tie it off and it's just a solid ball and you sew them together, that's the ones that tend to be floppy because it's a little tiny point sewed onto a little tiny point. So there's no stability there, so it's floppy. So for those tops, that's the kind I use the dowel in, and you stick the dowel into the body and into the head, and then you sew it together. And the dowel, you also put stuffing around it to, to fill in the gaps, um, is what keeps it sturdy. But if you don't close your head ball and your body oval, if they're open still, like if you decrease down to, say, 12 stitches instead of all the way down to zero, and then you take each one of those 12 stitches and sew them to each one of these 12 stitches, together like that, it makes a much larger base. Instead of a little closed up base, it has a wider base, and then you stuff that, and that gives it stability without a dowel. And that's two methods that I've learned in the last year and a half of how to make amigurumi. Like, I don't like making amigurumi that Jesse will be messing with a lot with the dowels, because he figured out how to get them out. <laughs> he actually took it out of, I think it was Buddy the Elf or my Santa. One of my Christmas amigurumis, he's pulled the dowel out of it. And, but my hippo that I made recently, which is actually back there on our little mantle, uh, he is the open stitch method. I don't know what it's called. It could be called anything, but that's what I call it. <laughs> it's where you don't close it all the way to zero stitches. You leave it open so far. And I'm pretty sure he was 12 stitches. So I took this 12 stitches of his head and sewed them to the 12 stitches of his body. But before I closed all 12 of those, I stuffed it full right there, the neck area, and then closed that last stitch up. And that's what gives him his stability is it's just open instead of being closed if that makes any sense <laughs> at the point of my heart let's see here what i gotta do increase it all right there's a little bit about amigurumi <laughs> so if you have any uh questions about amigurumi or something go ahead and leave them below or on the facebook group and as i'm developing that series of videos i will try to answer as many questions as i possibly can um, in those videos. And I will be filming a few little tutorials, not pattern tutorials, but, um, stitch tutorials, I guess. Like, the one I already have filmed is the Invisible Decrease. And I will try to film videos of the sewing on process and the weaving and end process, because I've had people ask that. Um, I just have to actually make amigurumis to show you guys that with. So I will try to start that soon after this week is over. I got a few things I got to get done this week. And then I can really go ham working on that. I want to make the Amigurumi series and I want to make some more Ravelry tutorials because there's still a lot of people who need a lot of help with Ravelry. And I'm working on it. I'm, I'm taking my notes and I'm re, you know, planning the videos. It's just it takes a while to actually do it. And uh, with Jesse here a lot. It's hard to do stuff. <laughs> so, he's actually at my mom's today. He wasn't supposed to go to her house today. But I, um, he ended up really wanting to. So she went ahead and took him. <laughs> Alright, now i got to do four rows. Back and forth. Oh, yeah. I 
throat's hurting a little bit. I hope I'm not getting sick. I think it's just the cold weather. It's been, it's warm today compared to what it's been. <laughs> the last two or three, four days, I can't even remember, have been in the 20s, really cold and wet. It's been raining instead of snowing. And um, today it's actually, when we were out earlier, it was like 43, I think. And it, it felt pretty nice because it's really sunny. It's not wet at all. It's just a pretty good day today. I hope tomorrow is similar because I have to go to the post office tomorrow morning and mail um, all my Etsy orders and all that stuff. And probably do some more errands since Jesse won't be with me. It would be easier for me to do a lot of it without having to get him in and out of the car every stop. That's one thing that's really hard when you have a kid that's in the car seat still is um, having to unbuckle them, take them in, bring them back, put them back in the car seat, buckle them back up. Even for little stops that went in by myself, I can just run in and do it in a few minutes. It makes it much longer. So, yeah. I'm trying, I'm going to try to finish this owl today because I want to get it done. <laughs> it's taken me a lot longer than I thought. And, uh, I got another project that I've got started. It's actually down here. Um, I'm not going to show it to you because I'm saving it for the No Kitchen Name episode. But it's actually my first fair project for 2019. I'm super excited about it. I would be working on it right now if I didn't have to finish this because I really want to work on it. It's grown a lot since I started it. I started it, I think, Saturday. Saturday or Sunday, but I think it was Saturday. And um, it's a lot of fun. The process of it is fun. And uh, the pattern, seeing it grow, is a lot of fun. I love the stitches and the colors that I'm getting to use. And, yeah. It's got a coordinating pattern. It was a free pattern. But it's got a coordinating pattern that goes with it. Uh, but it's a paid-for pattern. And I'm definitely going to buy it soon. Whenever I can get out of my craft freeze. It's like 8 or $9, which is a lot for a pattern. But it's a really nice pattern. And I will show all that to you on Saturday or Sunday for the No Catch Your Name episode. And I'm pretty excited about that. This week I've also got to mail out my Valentine's Day swap from Kayla at Llama Mama to my partner, which is Melanie from Stitch to Malu, and she already knows that it's her, so that's why I'm saying that. I have no idea who got me. They have not messaged me, so I have no idea who they are. Uh, which is, I think it's fun. You know, I think that's going to be neat to get like a surprise an extra surprise because you know it's already a surprise but it's going to be a surprise of who it's from i hope i wonder if it's someone i know or if it's going to be someone new it's gonna be cool <laughs> um i know it's not melanie because she got someone else i know it's not mary and i know it's not kayla because <laughs> i know they all got other people so there's no telling who it's going to be maybe they're watching me right now <laughs> I just look forward to it. I love doing swaps, but this Valentine's swap is probably going to be the last one that I'm going to participate in for a while. Because, like I said in a few other videos, me and Devin's got a lot of goals this year, and uh, we're going ham to meet them. And we've done so good so far. I'm pretty proud of us. <laughs> and uh, Etsy has helped out a lot, and YouTube has helped it. So, a lot of, that means a lot of y'all have helped me. <laughs> Anyone who's bought any bags has helped us towards our goals this year. And anybody who views the videos and shares them and all that. Because, um, you know, I don't make a lot off of YouTube. I've only made together in the year and a half that I've done it. Not counting it crate money. I've made, um, from YouTube itself, or from Google, I made... 230 something, no, 200, 260 something, because <laughs> in October I got a YouTube check, and this month, January, I just got another one, it took me that long to get to the $100 threshold, um, so that's really cool, every dollar helps when you're trying to get goals, I think I did all the rolls I was supposed to do, let me count, Alright, now I've got to make the first lump of the heart to make it heart shaped. Let me see my owl. Oh yeah, this is going to be much better. My other one, the heart, 
was completely off the sides and off the bottom. And I used the same size yarn and the same hook. Um, so I don't know what happened. My tension was way off or like I'm really tight with this or something. But this is also, this is the rough red heart. But you know how red heart varies. This one was, seems smaller than this one. So either way, I'm getting it smaller. So it's all good. <laughs> but yeah, back to the Etsy and all that. Uh, the Etsy shop has helped a lot. And um, I, I love making bags to an extent. You know, it kind of gets annoying when I'm having to work on them for hours and hours each day. But I do like making the bags and selling them. And I like that people like them, you know. And it's really cool to think that my bags are out in the world being used by other crafters. I think it's pretty cool. So, yeah, I'll probably, I will probably keep making bags for a while. I do want to start making different styles of bags. It's just, it's taking me a while. I was trying to design my own, but I'm having a really hard time with the seams on it. <laughs> and I don't want to keep wasting material making the same bag over and over. When I have a perfectly good pattern that's been working for me. That's why all of them have been drawstring bags. <laughs> because it works and people are buying them, so... I do want to start making eventually large zipper bags, like project bags that have zippers on them. And um, the, there's a couple other bag designs that I want to try making. Let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I don't know. I just have to wait and see what happens. <laughs> I'm going to do my taxes this year for Etsy and YouTube. Um, or really, I, I don't have to pay much at all for YouTube because it was, uh, I didn't earn much at all this year, or last year. And Etsy, I probably won't have to pay much at all. But I do have my account set up now to where I can pay taxes quarterly. Because <laughs> I haven't had to pay taxes at all. I've had the account set up, but you have to make a certain amount to pay quarterly taxes, and I didn't hit that last year. So, um, but I probably will this year because last year, you know, I didn't so as much and all that as I did the last part of the year so I think this year I will have to pay taxes but that's or I mean I have to pay them anyways but quarterly is what I mean instead of just when I file them but um I don't mind that you know I'm earning money so I need to pay my dues I don't mind paying taxes because it actually helps you know things run the way they're supposed to be Let's see here, decrease, four decrease, okay. I'm trying to think of more crochet things to talk about. Um, we're doing, I'm wanting to do the Amigurumi series and the Ravelry videos. I'm also going to do a series for, um, county fairs. Um, I was actually going to start working on those the other day. And uh, one of my videos was going to be, is going to be how to look up information about your fair. And when I went to my, my county fair's website, it's, it's closed because it's under construction for this year's fair. So I was like, well, dang, because I was going to like film some stuff about it and use my county fair's website as a, you know, template. <laughs> and um, I couldn't. I messed up somewhere because that's not right, right there. <laughs> um... Because it's close for con construction or whatever it says it's under construction. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'm trying to get all kinds of uh, information about that and the process of it. Just to try to be helpful. Because when I first started entering stuff into my fair, um, I had no idea what I, what I was doing. <laughs> I, uh, you know, I had to figure it all out as I went. So, it's, if, if I make some videos, it might help other people skip a few of those speed bumps and just be able to go right to what they're supposed to do. Alright, so my heart's almost done. I finished the first bump. <laughs> Whatever that's called. I think I can cut this now. Yeah, so this is how much yarn I have left from the first heart when I ripped it out. So it is definitely smaller. Let me cut my yarn. And now I have two random bits of yarn because this part right here was the second heart bump <laughs> or whatever so now I have this but I'm just gonna go ahead and attach this and use this, all of this up and then I'll attach that and use it up waste not to want not 
and got that tied on there. Um, I basically did the same thing, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, this part's a little boring because all I'm saying is okay because I'm trying to get my yarn attached. <laughs> So what are you guys all up to this week? Today, as I'm filming this, and I think I'll edit it and get it up today, is Tuesday the 22nd. So, yeah. I'm still running my, um, I guess I shouldn't say that. <laughs> Go watch the episode 68 for a surprise that's in there. <laughs> that is actually... It won't be relevant anymore after a few days. <laughs> I'll just say it. It's a secret giveaway <laughs> in episode number 68. Um, it ends on the 25th, 24th. It ends on Thursday, I think, and I'll draw a winner on um, the 25th. <laughs> and uh, also, until the 25th, on my Etsy shop, I'm ha hosting a... Um, Oh, I did that right. Um, a 25% off everything in my shop. So, in celebration of hitting over 2,500 subscribers. So, 25% off until the 25th. <laughs> and, um, some people's already bought some, which is awesome. I appreciate all of that. And just so you, people who know who's bought it, it's going straight into our savings towards our uh, financial goals this year. We're really wanting to buff up our savings this year and um, what we're doing is we're trying to prepare to get a house next year, hopefully next year. Am I supposed to have eight? Yes. Okay. And uh, so we're going ham this year working towards all of our financial goals to get everything prepared to start looking for a house next year and hopefully buy one at some point next year or maybe early 2020, what is next year? 2021, the year after that. <laughs> so um, we're just trying to get all of our ducks in a row and our savings beefed up big time, emergency fund beefed up big time just in case something bad happens, you know, because Murphy's Law. <laughs> and um, on top of getting our financial goals organized we're starting to try to work on our health goals and if you guys have been following me for any time at all you know that I'm one of those flip-flop dieters who I get really dedicated to a diet and then something happens and I end up having to not be dedicated to it anymore and uh, it gets really annoying okay so uh, I mean Devin's been talking about it a lot and I've been studying a lot. I've been talking about learning it too, about keto diet. I wanted to study it big time and learn as much as I could. I've watched documentaries about it. I've watched uh, medical things about it. I've watched just regular people on YouTube's experiences with it. Some people I already follow on YouTube started doing it and are doing good. And I just wanted to learn as much about it as I could before I tried it so that I could do it one, right, and two, make sure that I'm doing it healthy, you know, like that it is a healthy diet and not like other fad diets that aren't healthy at all. So, um, I've come to the conclusion that I do really like the keto diet and I want to try it big time, like hardcore try it. And Devin's behind me 100%. He's willing to try it. Oh, I totally forgot that my yarn was cut and I was, I temporarily, I was like, wait, what, what's happening? But I forgot that was a little piece. <laughs> so now i got to attach the other little piece. Which, I don't know where the end is. I have to find the end. Um, so I'm, I've already got a menu plan for next this whole next week and uh, I've got a bunch of recipes saved from YouTubers that I do watch and admire so I trust their judgment <laughs> on a lot of recipes and stuff. And uh, oh gosh, there's so many ends right here I'm trying to crochet over. <laughs> um, so we're going to start it this week. For sure and I am going to feed Jesse a lot of keto meals but I'm not gonna put him on a strict keto diet um, there's still gonna be things that he's gonna want that aren't keto for instance chicken fries he loves chicken fries and I know those aren't the healthiest things in the world and I'm sure I could probably make a homemade version that's healthier and um, 
probably even keto friendly using like almond flour or something and I really need to get an air fryer uh, for like my kitchen I've been wanting one of those forever but I haven't gotten one yet uh, so that I can fry stuff without it being greasy you know I don't fry his chicken fries anyways I don't fry anything rebake everything because <laughs> I hate frying because one it makes my face break out really bad and two it's messy and I just don't like tasting nothing but grease when I'm eating but um I want to get an air fryer so that I can keep making him things like that that he likes. He loves bread and tortillas. He'll just eat slices of bread and tortillas um, by themselves. And he does eat chips, so I can't take him off of everything all at once or he would, <laughs> it would probably be really horrible for a while. I mean, I'm sure I could and he would eat eventually whenever he got hungry enough, whatever I gave him. But I don't want to do that mentally for me and him because it would be really hard on him. He's only, he's almost three, so he wouldn't have any idea what I'm doing. And it would be a big strain on me because he would probably throw fits. So what I think I'm going to do with him is I'm going to keep buying the stuff that he likes. But mix it in with the healthier stuff, the keto stuff, the stuff that me and Devin are eating. And then slowly take back what he's eating and add more of what we're eating. And do it that way <laughs> kind of like weaning him off of um, the unhealthy snacks and stuff he does like a lot of healthy stuff though like he loves chicken and he loves um, he doesn't like lettuce he calls it leaves he won't eat lettuce <laughs> yet I'm sure he will eventually but he loves cucumbers and um, he likes strawberries so that would be good he likes waffles and I have a, a waffle recipe that is keto he likes sausage, so he can eat sausage and bacon. He loves bacon. He'll eat all kinds of you know stuff that is keto approved. Um, it's just I know some of his favorite things aren't keto, so I have to uh, make sure he's not struggling too bad. But um, I think for me, the worst thing when we start our keto diet will be chips because I do love chips. I love potato chips and I love snacking on them. So I'm going to miss those. <laughs> Pretty much potatoes in general because I love potatoes and uh, soft drinks which I need to stop drinking anyways and I, I do that a lot. Sometimes I will stop drinking them and I will go for months without drinking them but then I'll pick them back up and just start drinking them again. So uh, it's going to be hard getting rid of that but I need to get off caffeine anyways because it's not good for me and uh, I drank too much of it. <laughs> so, Devin, he's willing to try. You know, he, he'll eat anything I give him. He, you know, he eats what I cook. <laughs> uh, and when he's at work, he doesn't usually eat at work. I've been trying and trying to get him to take lunches and stuff, and he just won't. Um, he usually just drinks drinks or uh, water at work. Okay, I think I'm done with that. Yeah. Okay, so I had this much yarn left for making it a smaller heart. Let's check the size. Much better. It actually fits on, well, you can't see because it's not stuffed. I gotta stuff the owl and then uh, sew it on. So I need to leave some, about that much to sew it on with. So I still have a little bit of scrap that I will save. Or something because I could use this to make like an amigurumi nose or something if I make an animal this would be enough to make a nose or um, maybe a little heart or a little bow or something so definitely we'll save this this is a pretty decent amount of yarn it's really blown out because it's red heart super saver red hot or hot red whatever <laughs> I always forget what it is so okay let me pop this whoops pulling on the wrong part what did I do? Okay. <laughs> My heart is ready and I'm gonna tighten that up right there. I've got a couple of pieces I gotta trim off, but other than that, my little heart is done. It's really blown out, but it's done. <laughs> and it does fit much better than that other one did. On to my owl. So yeah, it's been 30 minutes. I guess I'll hop off of here. I talked a little <laughs> and I crocheted some so it was a crochet and chat. <laughs>
So yeah, if you have any um, suggestions for topics in another crochet chat, just leave them below. If you have any questions, leave them below and I will answer them in a crochet chat if they're not super uh, personal <laughs> or hard for me to answer, you know, because if it's a crochet related one that I don't know the answer to, I'll have to refer you to someone else. <laughs> But I'm going to hop off here and probably try to edit this video real quick and get it up. And I'm going to sit here and finish this owl. That's my goal today is to finish this owl so that I can start on my other project or start working more on it. It's already it's already about a fourth of the way done because I, it, it's made in two pieces and I'm, I'm a little over halfway done with the first piece. <laughs> so I'm excited about getting that done and having it done. And uh, I love working on fair projects. It's just fun knowing that I'm making this stuff to enter into the fair later this year and potentially win uh, ribbons and money. <laughs> Last year I got $99 from the fair. So I'd like to get more than that. <laughs> It'd be cool to hit over $100 at the fair just for entering stuff. Um, you know, it's always cool to make extra free money. Um, without having to do much. I mean, I know I'm crocheting a lot, but it's for fun. So it's not like I'm actually working for it. It's just bragging rights and the ribbons and all that are a lot of fun. And it'd be so cool to get another uh, best in show this year. So maybe my Afghan that I make this year will um, win best in show again. That'd be so cool. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm gonna hop off here and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.